We're ready. ready. All right. Good evening and welcome to another edition of the Whining Women. Um, uh, we are here this evening and so excited to um, be coming to you again. I think this is the first time for the new year. So happy new year to um, you all. Um, tonight, we're actually going to be talking about um, wine education and uh, wine education and technology and just how you can get a little bit more information uh, about wine online. We have some guest speakers with us this evening. So excited to have them. We have um, the Wonder Twins, Monica and Mavis Gregg here to um, talk. More specifically, Monica, who's going to be telling us about her endeavors with wine education and educate education technology and educational development and things like that. And of course, I'm joined by my wine sisters, Sarita and Leslie. So thank you for joining me, ladies. Thank you. So I'm going to start with Monica. Just if you can give us just a couple of, you know, lines about what exactly is that you do okay so I design consumer learning apps and right now we have a wine learning app and it combines online courses and games so you can imagine playing Candy Crush while learning about wine at the same time nice. that's something I could get behind <laughs> now what <laughs> like why not now, what made you come up with the idea to, because you have done uh, um, consumer learning apps before, what made you want to go into a wine app and not just some other shopping or fashion or go into some other um, industry? Well, I think, you know, I'm, well, I'm a big lush, so I love wine. And <laughs> I just feel like, you know, people, we're not com confident in our wine knowledge, so we want to... Um, we want to find a way. We want to be able to talk about it. We want to be able to order wine at the restaurant. We want to be able to go to a grocery store or a wine shop and feel good about our purchase. So I felt like wine was the most important thing because we all have that desire to feel confident about our wine knowledge. Uh, I have a question. How did, what's your background in? How did you get into like online education, like e-learning? Um, I am an educator by heart, so I've taught um, in higher education for six years, and then um, I have three years of my PhD in educational technology. So I focus on adult learning and online learning. So that's how I got into it. Huh. And what, what did you teach? What have you taught? Um, hospitality management, human resources, tourism, consumer behavior, those type of things. Oh, wow. Just saying. Huh. I'm sorry. But not wine. I taught a beverage class once. Wait, so who's going to be teaching? But not wine. The, who's going to be teaching on in your program? Or is it like live okay. or... No, it's a, it's um, video led. So, uh, well, Tanisha, you're going to be an instructor, and we have chefs, winemakers, sommeliers. Oh, okay. So a big mix of people. So you can learn from every aspect. Very cool. Yeah, that that was going to be my next question, just to um so to let the people know um that you have uh, wine professionals that are going to be teaching the courses. Because a lot of times, I think a lot of people, <clears throat> you know, they may take a class or two or they read a couple of magazines. They're like, oh, I'm a wine educator. Let me go out and educate the masses. But, you know, <laughs> you actually have some. <laughs> like, yeah. they listen to they listen to two Drake songs. They know everything about Moscato, so now they are wine professionals. <laughs> but I digress. No, no, no. We, we screen everybody, so we make sure that people are actually qualified. And we also look for, you know, great personalities. Like, you know, learning should be fun, so we look for people who have a good personality, they can interact with people. They're, you know, people want to watch them. They want to follow them. So it's not just like your boring wine snub. Mm -hmm. it's, we pick real people. Gotcha. 
direction. Oh, so what's what's the cost? Do you have like levels of like I don't know expertise or something like that? Because you know with the W said the Wine and Spirits Education Trust, you got levels like one through four. Oh my God, we're like on the same wavelength. Because I was about oh. to ask a question. Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, that's good, girl. Yeah. <laughs> We have three different levels. So we have the social level, which is you want to know how to read a wine label or you want to know how to um, build your home cellar. And then we have the culinary level, so it's like wine pairing, wine cooking, and especially like our biggest um, market right now is wine with dietary needs. So wine for the gluten free, wine for the vegetarian. Oh, nice. Yeah, and then we have the master level. So if you want to learn about wine regions, the different varietals, um, just the more detail. So if you really want to look good and understand what the hell you're talking about, mm -hmm. so that would be the master level. Okay. Now, do you have to take each of the levels in order, or can you just pick and choose like which um, classes, you know, which courses you want to take, or do you have to take them all in a bundle? No, you can do whatever you want. So okay. we one of the things about online learning is that people take classes when they're ready or when it's mm -hmm. convenient for them. So mm -hmm. you're about to go to a dinner and you want to pick out a good wine to impress your friends, then you can take a five minute course. Mm -hmm. Or you want to cook a nice meal for your friends, then you're gonna take a course on wine and a vegetarian cuisine. So you can do it any way you want. It's asynchronous learning. So you can learn anytime, 24 hours, whenever it's convenient for you. Now I have a, I have a question. You know, everything has a price. I know you have to get paid by this. So how much um, are all the classes? What's it's the free, range? girl. Everything's free. Shut up. It's not free. Yeah. <laughs> sure. It's free because to me, my my biggest passion is that learning should be affordable and accessible to everyone. So mm -hmm. I don't think that. If you want to learn about wine, you should be able to learn about wine. If you want to learn about whiskey or whatever, it should not come at a price. So it's free. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. And then how do you make your money? So I make my money actually from the companies. So um, they can. We'll have courses built around wineries. So let's say your favorite winery. Mm. They're like, we want people to know our product. We want people to know our brand. We want more brand loyalty. So we'll create a course, and so that comes as a fee. Um, they can also sell some of their products within the within the hub. Um, they can sponsor contests. They can do a little little bit of advertising. So that's where the money comes from. It's from the mm -hmm. companies, not the users. And I saw on your website that you can win prizes and stuff. Will some of the prizes be some of the wines from the wineries? Yeah, so uh -huh. I've, I've worked with a few wineries now, like mainly in Australia because I used to live there. And they, like, they want to branch out to um, the American market, for example. And so they're giving wine away. So we have one of our big contests will be um, how to how to describe a wine and how to read a wine label. So the course will be about a specific wine. I'll show you how to read the label and then you can take a, it's kind of, it's very interactive, everything's interactive. So we'll say this is a wine from, um, from Canberra. Now you taste the wine while you're taking the course and then you have a quiz and it says like what do you taste what do you feel? What's your palate? And then you kind of pick and, and, and guess. And then we'll tell you if you're on track or not. So it's great for the wineries because they can develop what they're, you know, they can see this is my palate, this is what it should be, or this is what I should be looking for. Mm -hmm. I think that'll be really cool um, from a regional standpoint also when yeah. you start pulling in like um, you want to have a course on Virginia wines or Maryland yeah. wines or wines yeah. of Oregon or wines from Finger Lake, um, different mm -hmm. places like that, and then reaching out to their um, wine tourism board or their wine board or whatever and getting them yeah. involved um, in the courses based on regions and maybe doing like just, you know, like you said, a quick 5, 10, 15 minute um, mm -hmm. like overview of the region and then you can definitely highlight their wine. So even if it's just like, I mean, more than a commercial for them, but you get a little bit more in-depth learning about 
the regions. I think yeah. that would be cool. Mm-hmm. Make sure you get like, Canada yeah. in for the Canadian ice wine because that's yeah, it's totally. Awesome. It's totally. I'll have ice wine. I'll have blue wine, like everything. So the big thing about the wine hub is like there's lots of sources that say this is a good wine or this is you know here's some information about wine, but we focus on applied learning. So you're able to test your skills to see to demonstrate. Yeah, I know about this or I know enough. And now I can go to the store and I can purchase or I can cook. So there's always some activity to help you apply your learning before your next purchase. Um, me and Tanisha were talking earlier, like when you take a, um, a certification class, it's so it's really time consuming and you really gotta spend the time to learn everything. How long are your classes? Are they like four weeks or No, so this is probably a, a dirty concept, but we call it in the software um, industry. We call it the toilet bowl bowl concept. Okay. So what can I learn in five minutes? Okay. So because gotcha. that's how that's how we learn. Like we learn while we're waiting for the bus, or we're in traffic, or in between yeah. meetings, mm-hmm. or we're bored or, at work, or we're sitting on the toilet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so you see a toilet bowl, bowl like it's a toilet bowl concept. <laughs> yeah. So we, we try to, we, so we make it, you know, very impactful, like maybe there's a video or there's some reading material and then right away there's some activity. So it may be a quiz, it may be a game, like who wants to be a millionaire or it may be a match game, something, but you know, 10% of what we read, we don't, re- we recall, yeah. 20% of what we watch, we recall, but 90% of what we do, we recall. So everything has some activity to help you remember that information and then be able to apply it. Mm. All right. And so where can folks find out about your app and your website and your online learning school? So they can go to winelearninghub.com and they can pre-register. So you'll get a demo or a sneak preview in February. And then the app comes out in March, which is very exciting. And we have some investors who are supporting us, and it's going to be great. We're very, very excited. Now, how long did this take you um, from start to finish, like from the time where this was just an idea in your head to, like, now? Um, It started in July. Okay. Are you serious? (laughs) Yeah, I was having, uh, because, again, my background's in educational technology, so it's like, what can I do to create an app and some online courses? Like, what what field is in demand? So I was having drinks or dinner with some friends who are wine connoisseurs, and they're like, "You should do a wine shop. You should do wine courses." And they introduced me to my friend who is he has his own wine brand, and then we have like a two hour lunch about wine, and then it just all came together. It just makes sense. There's a huge demand for it. So, yeah. Fantastic. I love how um, talking to you and then going to uh, various wine conferences and just to some of the reading and the research that I do on wine in general, how mm. some of the best ideas for wine products and wine accoutrements, I guess, um, come from people outside of the industry. And yeah. I think that's because wine people get so caught up in, you know, thinking like, oh, people already know that, or oh, people don't want to know this. But I think people yeah. outside can speak to it from a standpoint of this is something that I want to know. And then they talk to other people, yeah. and they're like, oh, well, I want to know that too, so they can come up with all of these um, ideas. And it kind of sounds like that's what what you did. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's I think it's totally like that. So I'm not, you know. I'm not in the wine industry, but also as a as a big wino, I love cool people who talk about wine. So, you know, like Tanisha, you're great. Like you just you have this vibe, you have this big follower. Like people want to learn from you. You know, they don't want to learn from some boring wine snub. You know, yeah. so it's kind of I really want to connect the right people with users. Like people want to learn from people that they can relate to. Yeah. So it's someone that's young, that's cool, that's knowledgeable, that's sexy, and then, like, that's that's the premise of our hub, is connecting people with like-minded people. 
Cool. Now, did you do any kind of like um, market research or any test yeah. subjects or test learners or anything before you? Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we did lots of market research, and actually, um, they it looks like the biggest consumers of this app. It statistically, it would say um, millennials or Gen Gen Y, but okay. uh, I have a pre-subscriber list, and that's mainly been of people from I would say 28 to 45. So you're talking about Gen Y and Gen Gen X. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the reason why they focus on Gen Y is because they're right now they're the largest um, consumer of wine ever in history, and also they're changing the way that people buy wines and the way that they look at wine. So people are all, you know, let's focus on the younger crowd, the newly twenty ones, the new professionals, um, and so we'll 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 slightly move towards that way. But I feel I feel strongly that people. You know, like me in my 30s, like we my still want to learn about wine too. And in a 40s. And in a 40 So our biggest I had a question. Our biggest I had a question. Can everybody hear? Can everybody hear? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Somebody had a question. I did, and then I lost it just like that. Oh. <laughs> and it was like, so, you, you know me, it was something profound. Like, I was about to, like, move the earth with my question. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> so, um, uh, well, I have a question. So, we have a spirits, we have a spirits girl who couldn't make it tonight. Um, are you going to move towards spirits if wine goes well? Yeah, we're going to move um, towards whiskey oh. and then cigars. Oh, nice. Ooh. Very nice. Yeah. So we're picking That's gonna complicated be... subjects. Like, they're yes. sexy, they're premium. Mm -hmm. um, whiskey is the same, like, in terms of, of Gen Y or Millennials. Whiskey has the same, like, um, the same surge. So, people, Millennials are consuming it because it reminds them of their grandparents, but mm. then they have, like, new things like Fireball and mm -hmm. Honey Whiskey and all this stuff. And it's a sophisticated drink or a grown-up drink. And so we see a demand for, I want to be able to talk about whiskey. I want to be able to talk about wine. So mm -hmm. that's going to be the next one. So that will come out in August. Mm. Yeah. But no, I love the concept. Ever since um, Mavis introduced me to it and told me about it, I've loved the concept of what you're doing. Because it's not so much of, you know, if you go in and take, like, a certification class or mm. any of those in-depth classes, you don't want to know that much. Like, you could care less what rootstock that Bordeaux is attached to or, like, what soil you, you get Pinot Noir from France growing out of. You're like, so, will this yeah. go with my fried chicken and waffles or not? Like, you want to know <laughs> what can I eat? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Like, exactly. that's what you want to know. You don't care that it needs to be 200 days of sunshine and 20 centimeters of yep. rain in July. Like, you don't care. Yeah. And so, I, love I think... I'm going to have to add that on there. <laughs> chicken and waffles. What kind of wine can I have with my chicken and waffles, girl? Champagne mm -hmm. is the one you want to go with, so... Champagne goes with yeah. fried chicken and waffles. My wine group just did a sparkling and fried chicken tasting a couple of weeks ago. Yes, oh, my gosh. Gosh. Listen, Popeyes and champagne is everything. <laughs> <laughs> Popeyes like, people used to, like, people used to think I was, like, this super fancy wine person, and I am what I need to be. But, like, listen, and you put that champagne in a red cup. To go with Popeyes, like you're really not drinking it out of a flute. Like now you look crazy. Wow. But can I, I, can I tell you guys one of my favorite pairings is a Chico stick and Chardonnay? I'm, I'm See, telling there you, you know. Believe it. Believe it. Believe it. <laughs> Wait. Like, where let's, you find a Chico the, stick? What you mean? I live in yeah. DC at the corner store. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> See, that's what I love about them. it. Like that's why that's why you need real people. So it's not these you know uppity snobby people. Like it's it's us. It's wine experts that we can relate to, and yeah. we have that connection. You know that's what it's all about. That eat real things and want to drink real things because sometimes like you're looking um, you're looking some of the magazines and you see all these fancy dishes you're like okay I'm not making this like so what's about to go with my Chipotle burrito that like you yes. want to know basic stuff you don't want to know what like yeah yep. you might want to have your fancy dinner your Valentine your you know I'm trying to impress somebody you want to do your beef burger your own and you want to have your wine with <laughs> that. But you also mm -hmm. want something to go with your everyday meal or with your carry out. Yep. Like you we want to wine know these every day. Yeah. We have a glass or two of wine every day. So. Every day. Yeah. And I'm not ashamed not to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah, that's true. It's definitely and maybe true. three glasses on the weekend. Like, don't judge my life. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, I live in France. Don't judge I'll my life. I have 3.5 sure. glasses. Um. I mean, they say it's good for your heart. I don't know. I stopped counting. I don't know. Sometimes the bottle goes by. Right. Sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. <laughs> That's late. <laughs> so, Monica, as far as your site, like, what are the next steps for you? I know you said it's going to be, um, it's dropping, going live in March. So, yes. from now until March, what do you have to do? What do you want? us to do? What do you want people, consumers, tell us all do. that? I want you to pre-subscribe. So a big, one thing, you know, so I said I want it to be affordable and accessible. That That's my mission. That's really important. But I also want an online learning community that is what the users want. So people need to pre-subscribe. They need to check out the, you know, survey, like what do you want to learn about? Because if you tell me, like, I want to learn about this, then I will go find someone that can teach about it, you know? And if you want to um, meet this wine connoisseur or you want to learn about this winery, I will actively go out and pursue that because that's what it's about, you know? This is a community about wine consumers. So our biggest focus is what do you want to know, what do you feel like you need to know, and then we will match that. We will go and find it. Oh, wow. That's nice. I love it. Yeah, because otherwise there's no point, right? Like I, it's, I'm not a wine company. I'm not a vineyard. So I'm, I'm like, I'm the facilitator. So, what, what do you want to learn about? What will make you confident about your next purchase? Mm -hmm. What will make you feel good? You know, when you order wine at a, a restaurant, and we'll, we'll bridge that. Because for me, it's, I get to learn about wine anyways by doing this. But I also mm -hmm. get to pursue my passion of educational technology. So. Tell me what you want. What you want to do? It's so nice when your um, passion and you know your skills and everything all kind of ties in. And works Absolutely. So, yeah. so glad that it's able to work out for you. Now, not and to be beating this. Yeah, I know nothing about whiskey. <laughs> oh yeah, I, with whiskey, I know general information and I know what I like. So. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's that. <clears throat> I might try to get up to, not might, I'm going to try to get up to uh, Scotland um, <laughs> while oh, nice. I'm over here in this side of the world. So we'll see how that goes. You were going to say hello to the Scottish boys, too. <laughs> oh, I'll be sure to do that. That's a must. <laughs> I'll get up there and send out two tweets and then be like, okay, y'all, I can't say anything else because it has got real <laughs> up here. <laughs> like, I can't do anything else. Oh my exactly. god. Uh, <laughs> yes. Wait, so Monica, so Monica, are you, you're in Portland? Did I read that right? I'm in Portland now, yeah. You're in Portland. Do you have a favorite winery in Portland? Oh, no, yeah, I, I just met here no? three months ago. Oh, so. okay. Okay. Yeah. I've been working with a couple of wineries, and that's also been fun because there's a lot of, um, Portland has this trend of, of young winemakers and wine mm -hmm. ventures, mm -hmm. yeah. so it's been yeah. fun to talk to them. It's like they want to get out there, and they're not the traditional wine venture maker, so I really, like, it's an like equal support, you know, like, I can help build their brand, they can help me add some courses, so, yeah, but I don't have a favorite yet. Okay. Uh, can I ask a question? What's everybody drinking? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, drinking it, yeah. I'm drinking water because it's 3 a.m. 
So. <laughs> but she's been drinking absinthe, according to Instagram. Mm. Um, girl, you better oh, call her out. Call her out. Call her out. <laughs> that was like five hours ago. <laughs> uh, what if you were to get some absinthe with some Red Bull? Mm. <sighs> Is Paris representing with Cocktail Week, Tanisha? Oh my goodness, they're like really coming through with it. Like really? for their first cocktail week, they're doing it up. So yeah. Mm. What are you drinking, Sarita? Um, I'm drinking a uh, um, sparkling from France, a Cremant from Alsace. Mm. Nice. Anybody see it? Nice. Oh yeah. yeah. I like yeah. that brand. It's really good. Yeah, it's really really good. And it's only fifteen dollars. Got it from Robbins. Shout out already to eat them. Cool. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love no, it. Awesome Ma Twitter, man. Mavis, this what are you so drinking? Because I saw a glass. I had a, a manzanilla. Ooh, oh, Sherry. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. I'm going to uh, broaden my horizons with Sherry. Yeah, me too, girl. I, I'm nice. A, mm. well, have, Sherry, you been, that's have you been to Mockingbird Hill, um, Mavis? I have. I was a little bit of a Derek Brown stan when I was in D.C. So, yeah, girl. I've been to Mockingbird Hill. Mm. Like me, it's not even a little bit. Like I'm just full on with it. Like I'm, I'm comfortable in. I'm comfortable in it. So. <laughs> you know, he stopped drinking every January. I was like, how do you do that? And he said it was pretty. I mean, he he said it in the post, not to me, but yeah, I, I read that article. I thought that was interesting. January. January. You would say that. Yeah. I'm like, you can have it. I, I was not a little day, and I had to. So I don't know. I did it for a little while this month. I did it for ten days, and I didn't know what to do with myself. I would be out. I'm like, so what do I do with my hands? Like, I don't. Know. So what do people uh, talk about? What, I don't. It's been show season. You can't not drink any. <laughs> we in Australia, we it was called Dry July. So you went the whole month of July without drinking. Mm. It's hot in July yeah, too. Mm. Exactly. I'm like, why would you waste that time? <laughs> time for white wine. Yeah, I don't, mm -mm. Nothing about that plan was okay for me, so no. I had to get off <laughs> So, okay, do you have a cat? No, I'm at um, no, I'm at somewhere with cats. So, oh, okay. you know, I don't, I don't know. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> oh no, you're fine. So before we let you all go, and you know get off into tangents as we do. Monica, leave us with um, your website and um, you know, people like the site. I know you probably have like a, a love offering that they could leave since the classes <laughs> are essentially. <laughs> I mean, I know it's probably a past the plate moment and maybe the end of the course or a website that we can go do that. So just Give us all your information. Say it here, and then we'll put it on. Um, we'll post it up later too. But if you could just leave us with that, and yeah. we'd appreciate it. Well, first I just want to say thank you for this exposure, and I feel very blessed to be just to have this interaction, just to talk with y'all, talk with cool wine people. I just think it's amazing. So, and I look forward to working with you. Um, so, winelearninghub.com pre-subscribe and there's just a short little survey saying where you're from, what you're doing and it's, that's important to us because then it helps us to find wineries that are near your location or that may be more for your demographic, maybe for your age, your gender, all that good stuff. So winelearninghub.com, fill it out, you'll get a sneak preview so you'll be able to take one of the courses, we just um, filmed the course about pronunciation. So <laughs> mm, that's a good one. It's really that's a good funny. One. <laughs> it's really really funny. No, because I butcher stuff. And when I thought I used to sound good until I taught in France, and they were like, "Girl, what? That's not how you say Chardonnay." I'm like, hey, right? Is? I'm like, it's but you fun. know what I'm talking about? It rhymes with it, so whatever. Yeah, and it's good. Like we want to know. Like we want to. It's again. It's one of those things. Like. I want to be able to, you know, talk about it. I want to be able to know it. So that's our first demo. So winelearninghub.com. Yay! Perfect. 
perfect. High five. Thank you, ladies, so much. Thank you. No, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Any parting words, Sarita? Um, what are we going to talk about next month? Because that you know you keep me together. Um, I don't know yet. We'll post it. I have okay. no idea. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I know. Sarita, fix my life. Yeah, you me <laughs> Girl, you Wait, no Questions too now. Tanisha's going to be one of our experts, so. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You need to join the club. Oh, wait. Before we go, Tanisha, can you tell everybody all the certifications that you have? Okay. So, CSW, Certified Specialist of Wine, Certified Specialist of Spirit, CSS, um, Accredited Burgundy Instructor with the BIVB, Spanish Wine Educator, Advanced WSET. Wow. Um, I think that's it. Oh, French wine scholar. You forgot one. French wine scholar. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> that's how it's done. I'm about to roll out with some courses. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, I'm like embarrassed because I was acting all goofy around you in France. No. <laughs> <laughs> And I was right there. Right I, had, I had Tanisha in the cemetery acting a fool. What? Why were you in the cemetery? <laughs> we went to the Do I want to know? Oh, no. Like, the cemetery is like a tourist attraction. That's where um, Oscar Wilde is, Richard Wright, oh. Jim Morrison. So. Y'all went in the daytime? And, and Vincent. Yeah. Who's that man? Vincent? What, mm -hmm. the Perry. What is his name? Vincent Perry, who we went to see because nothing is impossible. Oh, that's that's Patrick Kelly. That's Patrick, Patrick Kelly. Kelly, and then Vincent Sejour. That's what we saw. Vincent Sejour. Yep. You know what I learned this weekend? I was telling my friend that we went to the 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 cemetery is Pierre Lachaise or Pierre Lachaise. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I learned that the, that cemetery is actually uh, quite popular for men publicly masturbating. So oh. we did miss what? out. Well, see. <laughs> well, all right. Wow. All right. Well. You learn something we new on every day. We should have been looking out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Every hangout. There you go. <laughs> so we have schooled there you all. There won't be a wine course about evening. that. No, we, we oh, uh, before we go, real quick, <laughs> can you tell everybody where they can find wine courses to you, that that you took? Oh, like high level, like certification courses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where'd you take yours? Um, if you, I took mine in D.C. and at the only place to take them in D.C. Capital Wine School. <laughs> like, that's really all you need to do. Um, but but for more information, you can definitely check online Society of Wine Educators um, or Wine and Spirits Education Trust of London. You can take them. There. Oh. Yeah. We are so in the presence of loyalty. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's it. All right. Well, thank you all so much. It was such a pleasure having you all on um, the call this evening. And um, yeah, everybody check out winelearninghub.com. And if you have any questions, you can tweet us, you can email us. And. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, ladies. Yes, well, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, we have to have y'all back. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.